I have some questions for the boy. I you got know? some answers, man. Oh, I got okay, some answers okay. for you. Okay. How are you and how do you like the atmosphere at the festival so the far? The atmosphere so yeah. far? Yeah. I mean, considering I just came up this uh, sidewalk <laughs> and I met you two, so so far, 10 out of 10. Oh, You guys man. have been great. You guys have been great. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. Excited to play some drums. Yeah, we're also excited. How long have you been a minor member? Ooh, that's a good question. Officially, I think it's been about a year and a half, maybe. Officially, mm. um, but I've been playing minor since freshman year of college. Oh yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Ever since I, I bought, I bought this um, the jazz monophonic ride cymbal mm. when I was in when I was in university. I was looking for a good jazz ride because I was playing a lot of jazz. Yeah. But since I got that thing, I, be, I was like minor. I was sold. There's always <laughs> that one cymbal, you know, that like mm. makes you transition. Yeah, of course. And for me, it was the monophonic. Ooh, I still play with it. I still play with it. Um, are there specific drummers that you're looking forward to see and meet and talk to today? Obviously all of them, oh. right? <laughs> uh, but I will say I hung out with Grayson Nucrutman and El Estepario last night. Mm, I want to hang out with them again because we had such a good time, you know? So, <laughs> cool. uh, yeah, I guess I'm looking, at, looking forward to hang out with those dudes. Do you have favorite drum like underdogs that no one has on the radar but <laughs> you think, man, he's going to blow up and I already know? Uh, yeah, there's one one guy that comes to my head first thought. This kid named Zach Doobie mm -hmm. uh, is uh, from the USA. Great, great player. Um, I don't think he plays minor though. Maybe don't add that in the video. <laughs> <laughs> Do you also give drum lessons? Yeah, teach? every Sunday. Every Sunday. Yeah. My, on my days off, I like just take students. Oh, yeah. Just teach them. Man. Do some take lessons. It's it's like a different art in itself, the teaching thing, and, oh, yeah. and I would like to get better at it, which is why, you know, I take every Sunday and try to try to knock out some lessons. Cool, man. Yeah, yeah. Oh, are you ready for the next question, man? I'm ready for the next question, all man. Right, all right, Let's get it. All right. uh, when did you know that you didn't want to lead a typical life and that mm. you would do anything to make a name for yourself as a drummer? Mm. That's ooh, ooh, yeah. Oh, that's that's a good question. That's a good question. I guess when I was in high school. Okay. Uh, I was dating this girl, <laughs> but her parents didn't approve of me because, you know, he's like, oh, he's just some drummer. Like, he's a bum. You can't, you can't date our daughter. I'm like, damn. And that broke me, you know. And I was like a freshman in high school, and, and you know, she was a little bit older, so she was more, she was more uh, established. Mm. She knew what she wanted. I mean, I, I always knew what I wanted too. It was just to play drums <laughs> with my boys, you know, all my life, all my life. Because yeah. my dad did the music thing, and I, and you know, I learned from that. Mm. And I was always around it, always dancing to it. Uh, anyways, anyways, go, going on with the story. So I couldn't date this girl because yeah. her parents didn't approve of mm. my path. You know, this is high school though. Why are you going to judge my path? I'm in high school. <laughs> right now I think about it. Man. But anyways, anyways, so I, so, hey, what's up? Yeah, for like, I kid you not, for a few weeks, I considered quitting. Really? For a girl, bro. Oh. Like, this is like next level simp status. And then two weeks went by, a couple of weeks, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure the exact number, but I was, I was finally was like, bro, what am I doing? This is my life. Yeah, yeah. Like, I can't, I can't just, Stop playing drums, and that's when I became, I mean, that's when I went from simp mm. to pimp. Uh, how many years is it ago? Uh, probably like 10 years ago. 10 years? Whoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, how old are you? 27. What's a 27? Hey, new boyfriend right <laughs> yeah, here. No, 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 no. All right, Let's all right, go. All right, my boy. What makes a good drummer? Mm. His ability to listen. Mm. Mm, because, especially playing drums, we got all this stuff happening with our feet and our hands. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we tend to forget stuff happening around you, you know yeah. what I'm saying, like the other musicians around you. So for, for me, when it, whenever I can tell a drummer is, is more concerned about what the band around him is playing mm -hmm. more than what he's doing, mm -hmm. I'm like, oh yeah, that guy knows what's up, you yeah. know? Because yeah. it's, it's such a powerful instrument, we got to be sensitive to what's happening around us of course. On, on, the, on, the, on the bandstand. Yeah, yeah. And um, to me, that's, you know, that, that answers your question. Yeah, yeah just yeah. to listen is a, a Yeah, good the ability to listen. You got great hair, dude. <laughs> Man, that's sick. also, do oh. you have moments where you question something? Yeah, all the time, every day, I would say. 
yeah, even shit, man. This morning. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Yeah, all the time. Like you, you like motivation, inspiration. Mm. Um, but that stuff, at the end of the day, that stuff like motivation and inspiration, it doesn't really matter. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, because that, that that stuff comes and goes, like the weather. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. you might feel more inspired than other times. What mm. will always stay though is the discipline and building these these good habits for you. Even <laughs> when you're having a crappy day. Um, you can still rely on your own discipline to get the things you need to do. Mm. I heard this great quote. I, I don't know who said it, but the quote was, um, it was they talking about like some, some studio pr uh, producer guy, mm. but the quote was, amateurs rely on motivation, professionals rely on discipline. Uh, that, yeah. that like stuck with me for a while and I've just kind of been living by that. Man. I think that was the quote. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Take it. You know, oh man, I'm not, creative and not a creative state of mind, what can I do to put me in that higher uh, level yeah, yeah. Of, of mindset? Whiskey. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> That's simple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, Just drink. Nah, 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 don't do that. Don't listen <laughs> to me on that. For me, it helps if I, if I sit at it long enough. Like for example, right? If, if, I'm, if I'm just sitting at the drums, mm -hmm. you know, you're cold, you're not really warmed up. Uh, maybe you just woke up, you know, you're not really feeling particularly creative. Yeah. But just noodling around the instrument, like mm. maybe I'll put on uh, a podcast or something, yeah. or like a YouTube video, mm. uh, a Zach Greaves YouTube video, you know? <laughs> of course. <laughs> and uh, I, I would just noodle around the kit while I had that going in my ears, oh. and, and you know, just kind of wake, waking myself up mm -hmm. and just spending more time time on the kit, on your craft, on your instrument, because, you know, that's supposed yeah. to be home. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's supposed to be, you know, your com that's like your comfort zone is behind the kit. Yeah, you yeah. Know? So I'm just noodling right. around, listening to some podcasts or something, and then I might stumble upon something I like, like, ooh, uh, ooh, ooh, I kind of like what I saw. Pause it, <laughs> start working on it, yeah. yeah and yeah. then we begin the, the, the practice session, mm -hmm. you know? Like today, when you know you have a show, mm -hmm. how do you prepare for a show? Is it more the, the physical aspect, like you play your rudiments, or is it more uh, a mental thing to uh, prepare you for a show? Yeah, it's more than the uh, mental thing, particularly for a show like this, mm -hmm. where it's just like 45 minutes of just drums and, mm -hmm. and, and playing with tracks and stuff. Yeah. So what I did was I, re I recorded a full run through of the set back at the house. Yeah. Uh, I practiced it like, like once or twice. Uh, and um, but on the way here and the days leading up, like even in the gym, I would just mm. listen to those recordings, oh. and I'd be like, man, I kind of suck on this song, oh, okay. and like I would like get that, I would make these mental notes, like okay, I should do this better and this and this and this and this, yeah, and then yeah. you know maybe I'll do like another one through just to, just to physically feel it under my hands. Mm. But the, the most important thing for me was um, is just listening, yeah, you know, yeah. to like a show like this, for example, mm. or even a show with my band. You know, I'll I'll, I'll film our rehearsals. And just oh. listen. Okay. You know, just you know, your ears are gonna always be honest with you. you <laughs> yeah. Know? In the moment, it feels really good, and you're like, yeah. "Oh, I'm killing it." But when you hear it, you're like, "Oh shit! Yeah, I, I could have done something I'm better." <laughs> we just started this new band called Everything Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, we came out with a record in March. March. Mm -hmm. Wait, no, very March, April, May. We came out with a record May 25th. And um, sorry, I get the months confused. Like they start with the same letter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we just put out a record. We did our first album release show in Memphis, mm -hmm. uh, where I live, and uh, we are currently writing for our second album, which has been which has been awesome. But nice. I'll tell you about that first record, man. It was like the setup. I mean, the setup was so ghetto. Yeah. Like we had we were recording my boy's living room. <laughs> our uh, sound our sound engineer, Austin, Austin Burcham, uh, mm -hmm. out of West Virginia. He saved the record basically because you know we got a couple of, like douchebags that dropped out of college and yeah. we're like sitting here like hey guys want to make a jazz fusion record and uh, we don't know anything when it comes to uh, like sound engineering and the yeah. production aspect. Oh. Our bass player knows a lot, but um, nothing like super top quality. But mm. all that to say is get a good sound engineer because he mm. definitely saved the record. You yeah, because it, it's it's a, true, yeah. yeah yeah go, listen about it. It's like wow, it actually sounds like we didn't record in a living room. Mm or a bathroom or something, you know? But, uh, but now, all that being said, we have money now. So our next record, oh. we're gonna, we got, 
a nice studio yeah. out of yeah. Memphis. We're gonna attract the whole thing. It's gonna oh, sound really nice and tight. Great, great. Yeah, yeah. The date when it will come we're, out, we're or are you just working and see how long it takes? Yeah, right now we're still writing, so there's not like yeah. an exact date. Yeah. But the sooner but, the better, honestly, because boy, I tell you what, this stuff on this next album is a different mm. level. Okay. Different level than the first. Uh, I'm hyped. I'm yeah, yeah. Hyped, I'll actually, I'll be playing one of the uh, new songs tonight. Oh. Yeah. Okay. 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 okay that's tonight. good. Tonight. Last question. Okay. My boyfriend. What? <laughs> and what would you do if you had no followers, no contacts in the industry, and like you had to start from the scratch? What mm -hmm. would your plan look like to get to the top? Yeah. Yeah. That's that's a good question. And um, obviously, different rules apply for different people. Of course. Okay. <laughs> But I, but I will say, I think, I think it's very important to uh, take calcul calculated risks, mm. right? Like yeah. don't just quit your day job and give up everything to pursue this thing just because you're feeling inspired, for example. Yeah. Yeah. But, it, but and the reason why I say take calculated risks is because yeah, you're not gonna just you don't want to just drop everything mm. and, and just pursue this very difficult to achieve dream, right? Mm. But, but if you take calculated risk, you know, kind of maybe uh, save up, mm. save up for a couple of months of rent yeah. in LA or something or wherever you want to play. Not yeah. even, I mean, or save up for save up for like a year's worth of rent, mm. and then just just to just to stay home from work mm. and just focus on building content or whatever stuff like that. Because yeah. what you'll find is is. In the meantime, when you're when you're shifting like from your day job mm. to music or drum or content, whatever you want to do, mm. uh, you start to instill these these good habits. Like we talked about discipline, right? Yeah. You're like, okay, you know. But versus if you just start from scratch and you drop you drop your day job, you drop everything, and mm. you just go you just go shoot for the stars. Yeah, you know, yeah. you, you don't really learn any lessons that way. You're mm. just like, ah, I'm gonna quit my day job and just sit in my house all day smoke some weed and just hit my drums maybe yeah. maybe a video will pop off dude yeah, but if you yeah. take calculated risk mm -hmm. you're going to learn a lot about time management the discipline mm -hmm. uh you find in different days to practice and then filming mm -hmm. and then you're working your day job during that time mm -hmm. you you are in you are building these good habits mm -hmm. that will take you further when you do reach those stars you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying yeah you man. know what i'm saying does that make sense yeah. of course okay of course. yeah cool yeah i feel you take calculated risks Young drummers. <laughs> that was it. The interview with our boy. Yeah. Pretty, you can't beat a pretty face. Yeah, that's I like right. a beautiful yeah, face. Like yours? Bro. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, man. I told myself I won't drink until after my, ah, my, yeah, my play. That's, yeah, that's a yeah, yeah. good advice. Probably man. a good idea. But I just came out with a signature stick. Yeah, these are like the early prototypes. Oh, can I but we worked on them. Out? Yeah. Oh, ooh, I like the early prototypes. Nice weight. Yeah. But the official versions are in there, which are even better for, to me. Oh, okay. So yeah, I made the uh, taper a little, a little, th just a tad thicker. Mm. And yeah. um, yeah, I made the whole stick just a tad th thicker. Now that I think about it, yeah, just yeah. a little bit, just a little bit. Yeah, my bad. I had to think about it. Yeah, man. cool. What's up? We just did a little interview here. Yeah! As soon as I pulled up. <laughs>